Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and that is not like an official day on the Christian calendar, but every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, it is a guarantee that we will pray the 23rd Psalm and we will hear one of those passages where Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. But today is a little bit different. Today, Jesus does not actually call himself the Good Shepherd or just call himself that. Instead, he says something else. Here's a piece of the gospel assigned for today, taken from John chapter 10. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs over it by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the true shepherd of the sheep. And very truly, I tell you, I am the gate. But why? What does that mean, and why does he say he's the gate? Well, we'll get into that in just a second, but first, let's talk about the whole shepherding thing in general. Most of us, including me, did not grow up around sheep and shepherds, and certainly not the kind who lived and worked in Jesus' day. When we modern American Christians think about Jesus as the good shepherd, chances are most of us immediately envision some placid-looking stained glass image where Jesus is standing all beatific-like, a crook in his hand, a lamb in his arms, not a smudge of dirt on him, gazing off in the distance with a look that's probably supposed to convey comfort and calm, but really just makes him look like maybe he's bored out of his mind. This is not what shepherds were like, not at all, not now, and certainly not in Jesus' day. There's a Bible scholar named William Barclay, and as he tells it, the shepherds who lived in the dry Judean landscape back in biblical times, they were sleepless, weather-beaten, grizzled, thick-skinned wanderers who were never off-duty. Their clothes were dirty and tattered with wear, their eyes were dry and far-sighted with the burden of perpetual vigilance. Their beds were the very ground on which their animals slept, and their only defense against the night-prowling wolves and hyenas, not to mention the thieves and the bandits, was nothing but maybe a, a small staff or a gnarled club kept close at hand. So these shepherds, they were cunning and fearless. They were vigilant guardians who loved their flock so deeply, so fiercely, that everybody knew you do not mess with a good shepherd, and you darn sure don't mess with a good shepherd's sheep. But why the gate? Why does Jesus add that final detail, calling himself not just the good shepherd, but also the gate? Well, here's a little something you might not know. Out there in the Judean countryside, when a shepherd and his sheep maybe wandered too far out of town and it was starting to get to be nighttime, the shepherd would corral them into a sheepfold, a small pen, usually made of stone. But most sheepfolds had no door, no gate, just an opening, one way in, one way out. And where do you think the shepherd slept? You guessed it right there, right there in that opening, right there in the dirt, in the gravel, in the sheep dung, so that if anyone or anything wanted to harm any of his sheep, well, they'd have to do so literally over the shepherd's dead body. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I am the gate, well, he doesn't mean he's some low-energy stained-glass saint sitting on some random hillside waiting to make you feel all peaceful and serene. He means he's tough. He means he's in this with you. He means he's willing to fight for you. For you, for me, for all who are called by the sound of his voice. You know, the thing is that these days, that metaphor is a little lost on us. People would have known all of that back in Jesus' day, but now you and I, we don't know much about shepherding and sheep, so we miss all that beauty, all that rich and encouraging meaning. So do you know what I think Jesus would say if he were walking around right now? You know what I think he'd point to if he wanted to tell us today 
that he's on our side, that he's in this with us, that he's willing to fight to the end on our behalf. Y'all, Jesus was the master at talking about the things of God in ways people could understand. And today, I don't think he would say, I am the good shepherd. Today, I think Jesus would say, through gritted teeth and all the strength of the Son of God, I am the good nurse. Look, like shepherds, nurses are all too often misunderstood and underestimated. Like shepherds, nurses are too often assumed to be these placid, soft-spoken, beatific angels, overlooked, dismissed, just another part of the general landscape of the clinic or the hospital or the doctor's office. But if you have ever walked the halls of the ICU, or if you've ever borne witness to what really goes on in the inner sancta of our emergency rooms, or if you've ever met a nurse and seen what it is that they really do, well then you know, these are the shepherds of our day, the dedicated, the sleepless, the thick-skinned, vigilant guardians of our times who run toward the danger, and dig in fiercely, and live their lives and make their way through so much more than just dirt and gravel, and they do it all for the sake of the weak and the burden of love. So, when you see a nurse, when you see them in their respective fields waging war on our behalf, and that feeling of awe and gratitude wells up within you, well, number one, say thank you. Say thank you to that nurse and say thank you to the Lord Jesus whose selfless love our health care workers so willingly embody and display in these urgent times. But number two, you grab hold of that gratitude within your chest, and then you ask, Okay, Lord, what? What now? What for me? How shall I serve, Lord? How shall I respond? Because not all of us are called to be shepherds or nurses, but you better believe all of us are called to share without fear the selfless love of the one who first loved us. So if you're looking for Jesus today, if you need an image to hold on to, go ahead and stare at some stained glass shepherd if that's your thing. But for my money, here in these days, the days of the Rona, I'd much rather find my comfort and courage in the eyes of the good nurse. The one who's always run toward danger. The one who's never off duty. The one who's laid his life on the line for yours and loved you first, that you might love others in his name. Amen.